is very, very prevalent in manic behaviour. Just another way that she is using her platform dangerously. She was saying a lot of toxic and offensive things. Stop saying dangerous shit that can literally get people hurt. Hey guys, so today's video is about Gabby Hanna. I've been wanting to make this video for a little bit, but I kind of wanted the dust to settle a little because it gets kind of noisy around certain subjects sometimes and you, you sometimes don't want to add to the noise. But it's been a little bit, so let's, hello sweetie. Hi, why do you always come in when I start filming? So, let's finally talk about what happened with Gabby on TikTok about a month ago. So, I found out about this on Twitter like I do most things. Um, I saw a lot of people who I follow who have criticised Gabby in the past. Sharing concern, a lot of concern for like 100 to 200 TikToks she'd posted in like a day. I literally remember there being a clip from her live where she was lying on the floor laughing almost possessed. <laughs> it seemed like fake laughter or as if she was on something. I think a lot of people thought she was on something. That's, that worried a lot of people around what appeared to be a manic state. Like I said, hundreds of videos. She's trying to make out now, literally gaslighting everyone, that it was all just spoken word poetry. Hmm, 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 collectively, collectively. Look what the internet did collectively to hate a fucking woman for no fucking reason other than fun. Look what we are capable of, collectively, if we would remember we, instead of always fucking attacking she. God. 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 He parted us like the fucking sea. And now he sees red. He sees red. She. Help me! Help me! Wake the fuck up! Help me help us! Guys, but it didn't start that way. It started with me doing some spoken word poetry and trying to talk about things that I care about, which are homelessness and dying children and the environment. And you know, people were unnecessarily phoning to have the police come to a house for checks. I'm not a danger to myself or anybody else, um, but I do appreciate anybody's concern if you called out of concern, but please don't do that. Thank you. <laughs> now, people were doing that out of concern because they thought she might help hurt herself. Someone who's in a manic state or someone who is in the right frame of mind may not think that they could hurt themselves from an action which is clear to someone of their right mind would hurt them. Like, for example, I remember from watching House MD when he was in a... Was he in a mental hospital? Or? House was seeking treatment because he was addicted to a substance uh, when he was addicted to painkillers. He went with another psych patient onto a roof and the guy thought he could fly. That was the coolest moment of my life. It was fun. <sighs> You can repay me by telling Nolan he's an idiot and he fenders. Hey! Hey! Come on, get down. There's no cry for help. There's no cat in a tree. Thank you, Greg. No! That is the sort of behavior that people were scared of. I'm not saying she would necessarily have jumped off a building, but she could have thought that she could breathe underwater, or she could have thought that she could have set herself on fire and been fine because she was talking a lot, 
about God and Christ and being the second coming of Christ and all this sort of stuff. What if I read the right literature? What if I followed the rules? What if I was diligent and consistent and brave? What if I chose? What if I chose? What if the second coming was the person brave enough to choose? The person who took the hard work and dedication to sacrifice themselves in case it fucking worked. Believe me or don't. That is very, very prevalent in manic behavior of these sort of like God complex kind of scenarios. As I said, with the whole being able to fly sort of thing. This is not a people picking on Gabby. This was people were scared for Gabby. People who don't even like, I don't like Gabby. I, I don't hate her, but I dislike her because of a lot of her actions towards people like Jesse and Alex and all these sort of people. And, but that doesn't mean that people can't feel empathy for someone they don't like when they're clearly in a state that where they could have hurt themselves. So gaslighting people to say that, you know, people were thrown in the police for no reason uh, because they were just misinterpreting her video. It's really frustrating, especially because it just normalizes. She literally said, don't call anybody if you ever see this happen again, which is wrong. If you see someone who you think is in a manic state, whether you're young, phone a parent or a teacher, speak to a doctor, like it's okay to try and seek help when you think that someone may hurt themselves. That is completely okay. And to turn around and say that you shouldn't do that is dangerous, completely dangerous. Just another way that she is using her platform dangerously by telling people not to help someone in a critical or possibly critical at least situation. It's a dangerous use of her platform. It's not the first time she's done shit like this. Next is around, she's admitted that she was in manic state. So I'm just going to use those sort of terms because she said that that's what it was. Um, so during this manic period, she was saying a lot of toxic and offensive things about black people. Hey, you know why black people are inherently so much cooler than white people? Because they were raised with Jesus, mostly. They were told to respect their mama, keep your faith. So, black women especially, naturally embody the Holy Spirit because black mothers are always left to raise their babies alone when the father leaves. It's almost like the mothers depended on God to get them through. And that white man were like, uh oh, black people are powerful. That's scary. And instead of saying, hey black people, Hey, Native American Indians, you guys seem to be really peaceful and happy on your land. We just came here on this boat because we didn't like our homeland. So now we're here in yours. It's ours now, baby. About the DID community. It's like she's perfect. She acts like she knows everything. Why does she always think she's so much smarter than everybody else? Oh my God, she thinks her poetry is so deep. See, when people say things like invalidate the DID community, I remember saying that I cured DID. Right, so you invalidated the experience of having DID because you can't just cure it. About trans people? Hey, trans folk. I'm gonna give you some of mama's tough love right now. I want you to know that I'm here for you always. I will accept you through your journey no matter what. The choice is always yours to be happy. But I'm telling you right now that if you learn to love yourself, please baby, please love yourself because I love you. No false idols. I am your mother. Love your body. Love what God gave you. It's fun. Every sick thought you have, explore it. Is this safe? Is this sane? Yes, baby! You are safe and you are sane. You are confused. And I'm here to help you and show you if you please because I love you. And if not, I love you anyway. For fucking ever. And ever and ever. And ever. 
four, four, four ever. Mm. Now I can't speak about any of those. I can definitely see that they would have been offensive. A hundred thousand percent. Just normalizes those stereotypes that black people have had to try and fucking break for years. All it does is stigmatize a disorder that people have had to destigmatize for years because because of things like split. She was stigmatizing something that people have tried to break a lot in our society, you know, in 20 fucking 22. And then she mocked someone who admitted to self-harming. Completely different bitch now. Like Little Miss, I'm a vet tech and I'm so sad and I've been cutting myself my whole life because everybody's so cruel to me as she's literally exploiting and manipulating. Now I can speak to self-harming because I've had to get over that and it's something that I'm going to live with the, for the rest of my life and I will probably it's happened over the past 10, 15 years where I have fallen off the wagon, if you will. And I've cut again. I have been a cutter since I was about 14, 15 years old. It was a coping mechanism. It was not a good coping mechanism, obviously. <laughs> but I know how dark a place you have to be in to cut. And <sighs> to think any of these things is terrible. Can you blame some of these on a, or any of them, on a manic episode? No. The reason I say that is because I could be wrong, but in my personal opinion, it's almost like if you're drunk, you don't have a filter anymore. You don't have that socially acceptable filter on your brain. And I feel like that's what happened with Gabby. These seem to be, considering there was one after the other, after the other, after the other, it almost seemed like this is what she thinks when she has no filter, when she has no reason to be socially acceptable. I, I know that there was definitely things in, in her past that have been offensive previously. To see these kind of behaviours in a manic state is almost as if she still has these thoughts. She just now knows these aren't socially acceptable. Don't say shit like this, otherwise you'll lose your platform, you'll lose all your money. So she came back, she admitted, it seemed like when she was on her come down or something. She had loads and loads of videos, I'm not going to include all of them. I will link them below in case you're interested. She did admit that she took edibles and the previous times when she's taken edibles, she had like these almost god complex kind of trips. Oh my god, it was the edibles. I didn't even think about it until somebody commented that the kid who fucking lied his way into my house filmed edibles. Like somebody commented, oh, didn't they show edibles on the floor? And there were on that floor right there. I had a green plate and on it was my bowl, weed, and a bag of edibles. A long time ago on my YouTube channel, I told the story of why I don't fuck with edibles. And it's because I hallucinate on them. I had only tried them a couple times. One time somebody gave me a brownie and I literally saw people's auras and it was like this crazy intense experience. And then the other time I accidentally ate some chocolate not knowing it was edibles at a party. And then somebody was like, that's edibles. And I was like, I'm gonna go home. And then I literally saw the fucking Grim Reaper in my bed, for real. Like I literally said that. But over the years, people always recommend edibles to me and I always said no because I hallucinate but I had a few packages of gifts that some were gummies and some were wally drops which were like these um hard candies right so the past couple weeks I was like I have these fucking edibles like let me fucking try them because my throat was hurting from smoking and I was just looking to do something other than smoking right that's where the fucking difference happened because life changed for sure I was having some different ass fucking experiences for sure. Oh my God, dude. Hold on. Bro, for those who have a negative reaction to edibles, the symptoms can include a racing heart, excessive sweating, anxiety, paranoia, hallucinations, and delusions. They can cause people to freak out. Clearly edibles have a more severe toxicity than inhaled forms and the effects are psychiatric in nature. And I knew that, bro. I literally knew that. I told stories on YouTube about it. Bro! And she realizes that she needs to definitely never take edibles again. That she should stop smoking weed. I literally, and honestly, I still do believe now that I've been sober for like a week and I'm- Now, I wholeheartedly understand and appreciate this comment. So I'm not an alcoholic, but 
because of my brain chemistry, I can't drink alcohol basically ever. If I have one, I have to have literally one and I can't have any more for at least maybe four to five days. I normally allow like one a week. I mean, I don't tend to drink more than once every three months anymore. And that is because I have basically a crash. When I crash, there's no easy way to say this, I become very, very suicidal. Uh, it's happened over and over and over and over and over again, this, this pattern. Sometimes I think like, oh, I'm just being like overly cautious and then I'll have a drink after a hard day of work, for example, and then I'll have another drink the day after because I've had a hard day of work. She's literally just one drink every, like each day. I recognise that the reason I spiralled, the reason I had that crash is because I drank. It's happened to me a lot over the past like 10 years. It's something I've had to recognise and seeing Gabby recognise... Casper. Seeing Gabby recognise that a substance, any substance, has caused her something as almost traumatic. I imagine this manic episode must have been traumatic, especially with all of it on video for her to see, including letting a stranger in her house. Hello. Oh, hi. 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 Think you can use your bathroom? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Come on. thank you. Hey, there's mine. Oh, What's your name? My name's Nick. Nick? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Right there, it's right okay. Here? Right there. By the way, Nick? Yes. I know you know who I am. Come on. Why did you lie to me this whole time? Why what did you this? lie to me? That's for my acne, you dumb cunt. Get the fuck out of my house. Now. Now. Now! Again, tried to normalize like, oh, I was a really good person for letting someone in. You always let strangers into your house. You know, it was nine o'clock in the morning, I didn't think I'd get killed, like... People keep telling me is that by me showing kindness to a stranger in a situation that should be relatively safe at 9.30 in the morning, a 27-year-old kind of scrawny kid saying he was just gonna pee in the sidewalk or in the bushes, but he knows children pay play here, literally. I was kind to a fucking stranger. My friend was on the phone. I got his full name. I made it known to him that I and somebody else know his identity. I did not think that I was going to get attacked by Nicholas Pfeiffer. And telling people to not be kind to strangers because they might be murderers is a pretty fucking sad way to try to tell people to live their lives. Stop saying dangerous shit that can literally get people hurt. They could get physically assaulted, people could have stuff jacked or stolen from them, people could get hurt or murdered for literally their clothes on their back. Just stop saying dangerous fucking shit. Especially someone like Gabby having a very young audience of like easily probably 14 to 18 year old kids. They'll be influenced by what the fuck she says and this stuff is damaging. Going back to the weed point, going, for her to recognise that a substance has caused her in some ways harm, I appreciated her saying that and recognising that. It was very disappointing to now find out that she's gone back to smoking weed again, even though literally a week earlier she'd turned around and said that she needed to stop smoking weed because she could have this kind of reaction. And it was really disappointing because people don't recognise that weed, edibles, things that can get you high, like a, a nice soft buzz or whatever, people don't recognise that they can still be damaging if you have the wrong brain chemistry for it, for her to go straight back to it. It just kind of renormalizes the, oh, drugs are fine, drugs are okay. They can be, 100%. Like, I, I'm not saying that everyone should not smoke weed, but what I'm saying is, I feel like in some ways, weed and edibles and things like that have been normalised so much in culture that... People now don't recognise that if you have the wrong brain chemistry, things can be harmful still. Um, you have a you can have a bad trip or a bad crash and stuff like that. Like, like I said, alcohol is so normalised, so normalised, but it can affect people. And I'm not the only person I know that has this same effect. I know Steph Toms has spoken about this. I remember her speaking about it on her Instagram, saying that she can't drink almost ever because she her depression gets really bad afterwards like the, a day or two afterwards, literally exactly the same as me. So I'm not the only person that has this similar brain chemistry where 
it causes these sort of crashes, as I as I said. Like she had a explanation for this manic episode, not necessarily saying all the offensive stuff, but the reason for the manic episode, but then is almost going against the kind of advice she gave to herself. The last thing I just want to talk about is around uh, money advice that Gabby's giving. Gabby has said that people need to scrimp and save every single penny, basically. Um, and they're not allowed to enjoy it, even the little things in life, like, I don't know, getting a coffee. Um, instead, you should scrimp and save and buy like a $20, $30 thing of coffee and make your coffee at home. What if I told you most people actually don't have a problem making money, they have a problem saving money. It's our spending habits, for the most part, that people get wrong. Stop eating out, stop wasting money, invest in yourself. That's a choice. I make a pot of Mr. Coffee every single morning. The pot costs between $15 and $20. I buy a whole canister of coffee that lasts me months for 12 or 13 or 14 dollars or whatever it is this is the most delicious creamer it's dairy free you can get any flavor you want you can put cinnamon in it you can put whipped cream in it but one thing gabby hannah never has and never will be into is spending anywhere between four and seven to ten fucking dollars on a coffee in the morning. Ah yes, the classic boomer. Stop buying all that avocado toast and you get to have a mortgage on that minimum wage salary. Now, people definitely do make coffee at home. I make coffee at home all the time. But sometimes, like for instance, if I go into the office, I've spent an hour and a half traveling to the fucking office. I feel like, do you know what? I deserve a bloody Starbucks today. I want something nice, something a pick me up after that doom and gloom of a, you know, train journey. You know what? People who are on not Gabby salary, you need little pick-me-ups. Normalized stuff that is, as I mentioned in my em energy crisis video a few weeks ago, cancel Netflix, cancel subscriptions, couple of quid here, couple of quid there. It doesn't make thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds over a year or two. It makes maybe, maybe a couple of hundred, but not thousands. She's saying that's why she owns her home her two million dollar home because she scrimped and saved it had nothing to do with the fact that she blew up on vine and that helped her with her youtube career she had this sort of like additional following because she was part of the was it the vlog squad this huge audience that watched all of her videos i'm so sick of influencers or people with shit loads of money trying to put the blame for shit that's going on across the fucking world at the moment. At least I can speak for Europe, right? I can't speak for the US, but I'm sure it's probably fucking happening there. People in Europe are, we are literally living ha hand to mouth right now. I'm in a very fortunate situation right now, but I have no clue how long I'm going to live the way I am. Soon, like everyone else who's already been struggling, with these literally 400 to 600 pound gas price per month, by the way, this isn't per year. Normally it's couple of, about to be 600 to 1,000 pound a year for most people. This is 600 pound a month. Then we've had a huge fucking tax cut for millionaires and shit all for people below. There is going to be a civil war, there's gonna be insurrection, there's gonna be something going on very fucking soon because people can't live like this. I know I'm very fortunate, but all I think about every day is, I just think about pensioners. There's someone who I, who lives two doors away. I don't know what, how she's gonna heat her home. Even my mum, who's been a consistent conservative, has said that she's scared by what has happened to this country by this mini budget bullshit because they are ruining this country. The NHS is completely fucked. There's, I saw a video just yesterday of a hospital with like 10 or 12 ambulances outside and even just the ambulances have to wait 24 hours. The NHS is broken people. Do not allow these crooks and liars in suits to tell you any different. Where are they spending our tax money if it is not on the NHS? Up to a 24 hour wait for an ambulance in Stoke on Trent as of today while they all sit at the hospital waiting to discharge people. And where my mum lives, they've removed the closest accident emergency and now it's almost two hours away to 
either side. Now I'm very grateful that the UK has free free healthcare. It shouldn't be like this. I don't appreciate people who are in a very fortunate situation trying to tell people who people my age or younger well you should be able to afford to four hundred thousand pounds for a house when uh, base salary hasn't gone up in fucking years people haven't had decent pay raises in i don't fucking know how long the only way you get a pay raise nowadays is if you literally change jobs otherwise you're lucky to get maybe 20 quid every year like that literally doesn't cover any inflation whatsoever which literally means you are having a pay cut every single fucking year all of this happening and there's literally not only is the war in the ukraine still going on there's protest upon protest upon protest in iran with so many people that have lost their lives there's so many women that have lost their lives and yet you still got people that try to blame someone on like twenty, thirty thousand a year don't enjoy that tiny little luxury you have if you save that three pound a week you'll own a two million pound house in no time that math adds up right people like that need to get out of their fucking head and look at what's happening in the world especially considering gabby of all people during that whole manic episode the thing that she she's tried to gaslight everyone saying like oh all she was trying to do was get attention for homeless people but now it's people who are on 20 30 000 whatever a year uh, it's their fault for not owning a home because they buy coffee. Like, you can admit you're out of touch. You really can. I'm gonna stop because otherwise I'm just gonna carry on. And probably screaming because people are so fucking ungrateful for what they have. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you feel like it, I'd really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.